Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. Frank, I heard recently you worked on a new show. The Orville. The Orville. You guys yeah. made some costume parts? Yeah, we did a lot of work for specialty costume. That's awesome. And the show also has a lot of aliens in it. Creatures. Yes. So many good makeups on that show. So we're here to check out the makeups. We're actually in front of Can Be Effects. It's yep. the shop of Quick and Tarot and Howard, Howard Berger. Berger. And they've done stuff for like The Walking Dead, yeah. films Hateful like... Hateful Eight, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. like. A good jillion film. Pretty much they've done a little bit of everything. And I think Howard and Tammy Lane, yes. the makeup artist on the show, is going to give us a demo today of one of the aliens that they had for the Orville. I'm excited. Howard, thank you so much for having us yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely, Norman. Thanks for uh, coming and joining us today here at k and FX in Los Angeles, California. It's an amazing shop you guys have here. So much going on. Uh, here we're getting a demo today. We are. We're going to have, this is Dirk, Dirk Rogers, who uh, is one of our k and guys, but also he's a... Uh, 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 one of our suit performers, and he played numerous aliens in, in the Orville, South McFarland's The Orville. He probably played like 10 different aliens through the course Something of the like season. That, yeah. Something wow. like that, including Krill. So in episode six, he's, uh, he's one of the scary Krills. So, and that's Tammy Lane, who is uh, the key makeup artist on the show. And um, so we're going to do a demo on, on Dirk today uh, application. And what we have is it's basically. We, when, because of the, it's, a, it's a TV series, we had mm -hmm. to be smart about how we design stuff. Right. So it's really three pieces. We have this full cowl that fits over Dirk's head and gets glued down. Then there's a chin piece, and then there's a front of the face, and everything blends together as one. Uh, and then we paint it all up, and we color the inside of his mouth and all that good stuff. And, and uh, at the, uh, the end, he then goes to see Joseph Porro, who is our costume designer, and gets into a really amazing costume, and it just ties the whole thing together. So, But uh, that's what we're going to do today. I'm excited to see the transformation. Me too. I'd love to pick your brain about makeup design <laughs> sure. as it happens, but let's get started. All right, sounds great. You all set? All set. All right, let's spin let's you around and get going. How does a project like this begin? Like when the production comes to you, what do they come to you with? Well, what, how it all began was Seth, uh, Seth called and said, hey, I'm going to do this show. And it's uh, sci-fi and it's influenced by a bunch of things I love. And uh, I'm going to send you the script. So he sent me the pilot. I read it. And I'm like, okay, there's a lot of stuff in this. So, so right away, I, I went ahead and met with him. And I'm like, so what do you think about this character, Bordis, this? And things were, you know, the way it's written, there was description, but there was a lot of room to move. So after talking to Seth, I understand, stood his language. You know, there were a couple things he said, like keywords, and I'm like, I get it, I get it, because I'm a fan as well. So that helped. 
and came back here, brainstormed with the guys, that, and uh, started doing a bunch of like thumbnail drawings. And I found that Seth reacted best to that, opposed to like doing finished Photoshop art, which we did down the line. But the best was to sit on a sketch pad and just block out a bunch of things, like a paper that had like 10 different drawings on it. And I showed it to Seth. He's like, well, I like that guy and that guy. And I take that, and then we do a Photoshop piece of art that, that uh, was a better um, representation of what we were going to do. And uh, from there, then, we just started sculpting. And, you know, Seth was learning the process as we were going through it. Same with all the other producers and, and creative. And, um, you know, they saw, Seth saw stuff every single day. Either I'd go down to him or I'd email photos and video and, and just fine-tune it, you know. And he had a very, very specific idea of what he wanted, which was great. Because sometimes it's a shot in the dark, you know. But he, he knew what he wanted. And, and once we all understood his language, it was, it was pretty easy to get. You guys have a shared language, a lexicon for... Yeah, absolutely. Other yeah, well, I mean, I always call it, I, I always say we're all squids, you yeah. know, which are like big, like, science fiction, horror, fantasy fans, and right. it just, it's all exciting, and the squid part is like all our tentacles start flowing around, because we're like, oh my God, look at that, da, 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 da. And so we all kind of have that mentality, so when he would say, you know, keywords like, you know, I want it to be like this, or, you know, I'm thinking more like, you know, this character, and I'd be like, I know exactly what it is. Meanwhile, everyone in the room is like, what exactly is a right. this or that? I'm like, I know what it is. And I got it. your sketches are it. forms, textures, Yeah, absolutely. And, and, but, you know, when you're starting to design, it's all about the silhouette, you know? So that was the big thing. Like, let's find the right silhouette for the krill. Like, what does he look like, you know? And, and the thing was, Seth never wanted it to be, as he put it, a dude in makeup. So we always wanted to find something that was right. Like, Bordis was a difficult design. You know, we went through, it was written as like this kind of lava rock guy and right away I was thinking like Ben Grimm. Mm -hmm. So the first designs were that, and, but that was incorrect. So we kept redesigning, redesigning, redesigning and it finally came to a point where I went down to his office and I took the actor's uh, head cast, Peter Macon's head cast with clay and some tools and sat there and sculpted for like four hours right in front of him and until we hit the right point. And he's like, that's it. That's what I love. Brought it back here, gave it to Garrett Emmel, who was one of our sculptors, and he finished it off, made it beautiful, and that's how we found Bordas. But it took a while, it took weeks, you know. But what was smart is Seth um, started everybody early. Production started us designing and building like six months ahead. This isn't a show where you can just have two-week pre-production. You need months and months and months to figure it all out and see what works and doesn't work. And even after we did our first makeup tests, there were things we went back and tweaked. We changed Bordas's nose. Alara's forehead, um, a bunch of different things altered, you know, and we, and we saw problems like, okay, I want to do this. This overlaps kind of weird here and it feels like a, you know, weird edge here. So we were always redeveloping and redeveloping, even with Isaac, because we ended up building Isaac's head and hands and Joseph Poro and his crew built the suit. Uh, for the pilot, we had one head and we realized all the trouble, all the problems with it. So then when we had a hiatus between the pilot and episode two, we completely re-sculpted the head and rebuilt it so that we could have it big enough to put an airflow system inside uh, so that Mark Jackson, who was our actor, could see really well out of it. The lights could work and be adjusted. It had a hundred different things, you know, from, it was kind of like, you know, the, the Volkswagen bug that turned into like the Range Rover, you know. And, and then for a characters like the Krill, they're not hero characters. How do you manufacture, and if there are a lot of them, how well, do you design a prosthetic yeah, it's, to Yeah, it's, it's, it's have crazy. So many? Well, we did have a tremendous amount. There's an episode coming up called The Krill, and we ended up doing 111 Krill makeup for that episode. So in, wow. within an eight day period, we did 111 Krill makeup, including hero makeups on Seth McFarlane, because Tammy did that, did Seth's makeup, and, uh, and then I did the Krill makeup on Scott Grimes. So we had specific makeup sculpted for them, but we had pre-sculpted uh, a bunch of different hoods, a bunch of different cowls, different sizes, and faces and chins, and we could mix match based on who the actors were. So that, that way we have a multitude. Plus we had to run so many, and I knew that episode was coming up. So we were running two months in advance to get as many pieces as we could get out. And with these cowls, we reuse these cowls twice on the same actor, and then after that we throw them away. But the chin and face, we don't reuse. We have to run them every single day. So it's, it's, a, it's a, big, uh, a big task for our shop, for the guys in the, in the, in the foam room department uh, that are running 24-7, you know. And same with Mocklins, because we have a big Mocklin episode, and um, it, it's, uh, it's a big manufacturing job. And then pre-painting and 
seaming and prepping, so it's it's crazy. It's never exactly the same. You're talking about cows that can work for extras that you may not have met before, yeah. or people from your team, or things that are exactly. going to be closer up on screen, maybe more expressions needed. Exactly. Um, how yeah. much pre prep work <laughs> here versus on set? Well, very little on set because uh, you know we had you know like a handful, maybe like five hero actors that we had made specific makeups for, you know, like for Seth and mm -hmm. Scott and a couple other guys. And then the rest were all background and they just showed up and we're like, okay, let's see how this all works yeah. out. So that's why we had enough um, stock in our cache and different sizes that we could, each makeup artist would have his, the actor in the, in the chair and put it on and try to fine tune it and see how it all worked together and all that good stuff. So it, it all puzzle pieced together, which was always my plan. And the production was always nervous, like, so how are you going to do all this? I'm like, I have a plan. Believe me, I know, I know how we're going to do it. And, and that's why we have all these different size pieces. So like maybe this is a little smaller, so then I've got a bigger one that can go on this guy. And, um, and that was really it. And once everything was pre-painted um, prior to the going on, onto, the, onto the actor, that saved a tremendous amount of time as well. You know, if it, we had just started with the raw foam, it would have been hours and hours. But in the essence, the makeup takes about an hour to an hour and a half. And you're designing for <clears> that, <throat> knowing yes. that they, yeah. they have to be ready when the cameras start rolling. Absolutely, yes. And very little maintenance on set. You know, when you have, you know, 20 krill standing there, you, you don't want to be like having to touch everybody up every five minutes. You know, you want to have it ready to go and ready to rock. And, and it's just everybody's good. And we also had contact lenses in our hero guys. Um, so that was a whole nother thing. So yeah, it's one thing after another. It's, it, it, just, it just keeps going and going and going. Where are we right now in terms of application? <clears throat> well, right now Tam's uh, finishing up painting it. It's, again, it's a really simple makeup, you know? It's, it's not as complicated as, as it may look. Um, but yeah, we're just basing it out. I'm gonna go and paint my guys, uh, my side there. And we're just using some rubber mask. We were gonna, uh, which seemed to work really well. We found that going back to some of the old, old, uh, Techniques, old school techniques, worked really, really well on this show. Using like rubber mask, grease paint, and and uh, airbrushing uh, acrylics and so forth. It doesn't always. I always find that because there's there might be some new processes and something new. It's not always the best. You don't just because it's new, you don't have to use it. And for instance, like this is foam rubber, which is old school stuff. And we use a lot of foam rubber here at the shop. Um, other shows that we do are are all foam. And if we feel that silicone is needed for the character, then we'll we'll go with silicone. But I like the old stuff, you know. It's it's. I, but I I rediscovered it on the show. I forgot mm -hmm. about like rubber mask grease paint. And Tammy and I were like, well, let's just use this instead. This is really nice and quick. And and um, you know, part of the fun of shooting here in L.A. was we got to pull from a great cachet of makeup artists. And one of them was um, uh, this one artist named Craig Reardon, who's been around forever and ever and ever. And we pulled him out of retirement. And he's really old school. And he had uh, some techniques that you know I used when I was a kid. But he still uses them. And they work really well. And I'm like, well, I'm going to do that too. Like using an aqua color, you know, which is a water-based makeup, instead of this, you know, like the Pax paints or the glue paints and stuff that um, you know, it sticks really well, but there is a certain type of maintenance to it, like around the mouth. So if, if we use makeups that are a little more pliable, like rubber mask or aqua color, it doesn't, it doesn't break down. And if it does, we just go in with a brush and retouch it up. It's not like a whole big re-glue down. So kind of going back to the, the way we used to do it, it's kind of fun, you know? And it kind of brings it to like the feel of the show too, which is kind of a familiar feel. Um, I think Seth always wanted this to feel like, you know, you were watching it when, the same feeling you had when you were a kid watching science fiction and fantasy on television. And I think he, he achieved it. That was the whole thing we were shooting for, you know, and, and making it feel like the, not that we were, co we're not copying any makeups or, or trying to create characters that were like, hey, that looks like a this or a this. But we wanted it to feel like you've been looking at these characters for quite a while. It's how you remember in your head. Exactly. But doing it today. Exactly.
once the appliances are on, mm -hmm. it looks like you're um, tying it to his skin. Right. Uh, and then what type of uh, painting work do you do on it? Well, what we did is we, we had to uh, basically uh, uh, paint in where the blend is, which is, you know, we, we have the chin piece that attaches here, so we need to paint out Dirk's uh, lower lip and upper lip a little bit and around the eye sockets and so forth and anywhere where this blends together, like up in here. So we just used rubber mask grease paint today, which made it really quick and simple. And, uh, and if we had to go to set, this would, it would hold all day as well. It's perfect. So, um, but yeah, just went ahead with like the white base and went in with a little black and a little bit of that kind of teal blue that's in the, in the krill makeup. Um, again, we designed everything so it's pretty simple, you know. Um, I would go in normally maybe with a little airbrush if I, if I felt like it just to feather things out. But this looks pretty good to me, you know, as far as acryl. Acryl makeup goes. I like it. I think it's cool. Pretty good. But yeah, we tried to make everything as simple as possible because we had so many of these makeups playing every day. And we had something like 19 makeup artists. So instead of everyone trying to figure it out, you know, it was like, okay, these are the colors we're using. This is kind of how it goes. And I, we let everybody do a little bit of the, you know, individuality. There's a hundred ways to make a hamburger, but at the end of the day, it's a hamburger, you know. So it kind of plays that into that, into that, mi that mindset. And... Um, but we, you know, it was interesting to see also what people would come up with. Some artists would make it exactly like, you know, the base of what we were doing. Some people would go a little bit off and they'd be creative, you know. Sometimes we'd have to pull it back. Sometimes it was fine. Were there differences uh, you know? at the end of show versus the beginning of show? Yeah, the first time we did the krill for the pilot, they're totally different now, in my opinion. Like, I like them much better than we had in the pilot. In the pilot, they were, like, white and black, they're, and, you know, and a little bit of grays. And then we ended up throwing in this kind of bluey, kind of age tattoo color, which I really like a lot. It kind of gives them a little bit more depth and, and uh, dimension. So yeah, things kept changing in the way we painted. And then if I had somebody like Steve Prouty, who's a great makeup artist, pre-paint a set, and I was, I'd see, look at him like, oh, I really like that paint job, you know? So I'm like, okay, let's make them all like this. So it, they were kind of changing from time to time, you know? And, and I kind of like to change up makeups anyhow. I don't ever really do it always the same, you know, every day. Even though it's a continuity makeup, I'm like, ah, I'm going to change it a little bit here and there and try to find um, a better look or a better way to do something, you know, and just keep it keep it interesting for me too, you know. And we know is from our favorite science fiction shows, those characters evolved as oh, we saw the Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, and we certainly have characters that evolved. I mean, if you watch the pilot, um, you'll see that uh, Alara uh, is in a different makeup than she is in the series, you know, because after we shot the pilot, we thought, oh, you know what, maybe we'll revisit this character, and we changed the forehead and changed, you know, some of the other stuff and just her general makeup and gave her more of a beauty makeup, you know, really red lips and her eyes kind of have that cat eye look to it and um, as far as the makeup goes and, uh, and just streamlined the whole thing, you know. But I always felt there was like a little concern at, at, by, from the producers, like, are we going to notice? And to tell you the truth, you never noticed. You probably didn't even notice that there was a change from the pilot to the, the rest of the series. So, you know, but, uh, but yeah, it's good to tweak. You want to tweak and, you know, make sure that, you know, you finally find something that you settle in. I'm like, yeah, I kind of like this. This is how the krill's, the, for the rest of the season, the krill's going to feel like this. Or the rest of the season, you know, Bordas and his, his species is going to feel like this. So it was, a, awesome. it was a great opportunity. Great thank you so much, Yeah, Howard, thank you so much. Thanks, Norman, for coming in. Insight into your process. Yeah. You look amazing. Thanks. Feel yeah. good. Yeah, you feel like a krill now? I feel like a krill. That's right. The krill of our dreams. Yeah, he feels like a Yeah, he feels like a krill. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, that was super cool. It was so great to get to see that makeup, like, from beginning to end, because I'd only see it on set when it's done and out of the trailer. But to get to watch them, like, put it together, it's so elegant how they made it real simple and real, like, user-friendly for any makeup artist that would have to come in and apply that every day. Right, it's like, it's designing it to be, it's not mass production, but they actually had to make a lot. A lot, he was saying like 5,000 makeups over the course of the series. That's incredible. A lot. Right, and then of course you got saw the costume part, yes. so on screen, it's that makeup And it all ties with... together so nice. Yeah, that's, that's what happens when you get departments that work together really well and people that really care about the show. And I think they really succeeded at evoking that classic science fiction. Yes. At least when I was a kid, yeah. what I loved growing up. It's fun. It's totally fun. Yeah. So thank you, Howard. Thank you, Tammy, for giving us that demo. Yep. And we'll have more uh, special effects on the site in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.